Hello, my name is Federico Fernandez. I am a senior fellow with the Austrian Economic Center, and this is a special video for the online free market roadshow. You can find more videos like this and the lineup of upcoming online events at fmrs.online. Today I will be interviewing Anders Sichtet on the situation in Sweden regarding coronavirus, the economy there, etc. And there is an advisor at Scantec Strategy Advisors to major, major Swedish industry and business organizations. He's also an entrepreneur and chairman of Ben Stitzkrift, a weekly journal on politics, economics, and culture, which was founded in 1911. Anders did not find found it, by the way. <laughs> He's also author of several books on taxation and mobility. Online, you can find him at anders.itstedt dot com at svensktidskrift.se and on Twitter his handle is a each that is at a each that I'll put all the links below on the on the notes. Anders, welcome. Thank you very much, Federico. I'm happy to Thank join you today. Thank you for for being with us. And my first my, my first question to you is: What can you tell us about the the situation in in, in Sweden, particularly the very uncommon approach that Sweden is is taking regarding coronavirus? Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, quite. Uh, there have been a lot of articles in uh, international also uh, on about the Swedish situation. And uh, I think the difference is mostly that we have no total lockdown. There is no re sort of regulated lockdown. We have a bit different approach than many other countries. We have the uh, recommendation that we should stay at home and especially when we are sick or have symptoms and we should wash our hands and practice social distancing. And we also have a regulation on maximum 50 persons at every place. And um, all this is, of course, the, the strategy is to, to lower the spread and also to keep the pressure on the, on the healthcare system uh, lower so it can handle, handle uh, the, the situation. And until now, it seems like it worked. Uh, but we also have closed uh, universities that are more on online and uh, schools for uh, older children, so some of them closed, but kindergarten and schools most open. open. And uh, most shops are open, but they are not very crowded. People are trying to stay at least two meters from each other. So a lot of shops also have sort of self-regulation. You can only be like eight persons here. Uh, I went to the local fish shop here in where I live yesterday, and they had put the uh, the waiting line outside so you have to take your ticket in a and wait in a waiting line uh, yeah accordingly outside in the fresh air and so on so that that's that's sort of self-regulation and uh, our prime minister he's a social democrat stefan Löfven. he was holding a speech uh, to the nation week two weeks ago or something like that and, and uh, he said that everything can't be regulated. We have also to rely on, on good manners. And I think that's, uh, I agree very much with that. It's, it's sort of personal responsibility, both to yourself and to other people to, to keep social distancing and uh, everything can't be regulated. Yeah, that's, that's the first. That's uh, <laughs> reflection on the situation is weak. That's definitely, yeah, thank you. And that's very a very important point because uh, as you mentioned, well, there are several um, uh, articles already circulating online and, and, and some of them are, are stressing that point that in Sweden, there has been an emphasis on personal responsibility. Mm, and yeah. also, I, I would, I would like also like to ask you if you can tell us a few things that, let's say, the private sector. So we, you mentioned a few, but also some responses from the private sector. You know, uh, regarding this 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 problem with the coronavirus. Yeah, I think I think first I would say that that uh, we we also have, of course, uh, put in regulations on important, I think, elderly people, 
most uh, homes for for elderly people are closed for visitors and so on so so it's a focus on on saving older people's lives but but less regulation on on younger per persons and so on and of course it's it's not regulated uh, lockdown but in practice a lot of businesses of course have a lot of problems because people are not buying so much we're staying at home we have more video meetings the the um, uh, sort of uh, restaurants and hotels and transportation businesses almost totally zero business at all but we also have this problem in industry while while uh, everyone if someone is coughing or something like that a lot of, of course people are afraid and so on so so people will regularly uh, sort of uh, flu or something not not the virus they're also staying at home and since it's we have no that's a problem here we have too le less testing capacity if we have, could test more people we could also say that you can go back to work and i have friends with uh, big businesses and industries and they say it's impossible to to we have to have like 50 percent of the workforce staying at home because they don't know if they are have the virus or not and that's a big problem for industry but it, it's sort of self-regulated but it, it eventually it goes down to all the business also yeah and speaking of, of businesses what are the measures that the government has announced in order to help them in a way you are an expert in taxes is there any news regarding that tax postponements uh -huh. maybe tax uh, you know lowering taxes what's uh -huh. going on on that front yeah if you're going on on to the economy we can see there we have many layoffs 42,000 uh, as of today i checked just before today and the official growth forecast it says like minus six percent in the second quarter and probably more than minus three percent for the whole year and we have uh, as most other countries we have government program mostly credits unfortunately but some reliefs paying uh, for mostly paying for for workers and uh, the Swedish government has a very uh, healthy financial status since the financial crisis we put up a regulation that we actually had a, a surplus goal in the official budget on two percent every year so we have sort of the government has saved money for like 15 years some 12 14 years something like that so the the the, the swedish national debt is 35 percent of gdp and, and this is sort of saved as a what's called a war uh, cra crash uh, war cash reserve for 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 this kind of situation so it's i think it's time to use that that buffer in uh, in the economy now and uh, the business community calls for like you have to put out like 100 billion every month something like that to to keep uh, economy running and uh, there are some proposals from the business community on that and also from the opposition party the government is doing about half of that today they we have uh, uh, stopped we have the social contribution taxes are lowered uh, for for smes and also on the, there's some lock on that sort of cap on that but there is a much lower social contribution taxes and 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 uh, sort of tax credits also uh, yeah that's the most of it but i think most business owners are they calling for more need that need to do more i think in, in this area i see it's it's very interesting what you what you were uh, mentioning and i was thinking while 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 i was listening to you that it's true that you know none of us probably could have planned for the coronavirus you know no. it really didn't exist uh, technically a few months ago however uh, we always know that a rainy day could happen hmm. you know and, and in fact is going to happen it always yeah. is 
And, and that is something, I mean, it's interesting that, you know, the, the, the Sweden, not only regarding not having a, a fully mandated lockdown, but also in this regard, in this fiscal shape, let's say that the state is, mm. is again an exception because most countries, and this also goes to many families in many countries, people are living like with maxed out uh, credit cards, no savings, from paycheck to paycheck, not being able to, to afford an extra cost, let alone the coronavirus. And that is, I mean, the, the current situation is also, you know, putting that totally on the surface that we have, well, consumption have, has been stimulated so much that now we understand that, you know, what, what our parents and grandparents always told us, hey, have some money for a rainy day. Yeah. It was a very wise advice, but we totally forgot about that. Mm, I agree totally. But then some people say that, that businesses themselves should have money for a day like this. And I think most uh, private businesses have their, uh, their uh, sort of escape plan and, and money, but not for a total lockdown. That's to something totally different than, than you could plan for. You can plan for a bad season or a bad product or a really lease or something like that or fierce competition or something like that. But, but to total lockdown and the lockdown is actually that's the government who impose a total lockdown. Then I think it actually it's the government that should pay for the cost of a total lockdown also. So I think it's uh, that's not my normal uh, how, how to talk on taxes and subsidies. Re normally, I'm totally against subsidies in all ways, in all kinds of uh, uh, ways. But but this is a totally, yeah, it's a totally different situation. And and the Swedish business community has been overtaxed for many years. We have both one of the highest taxes in the world. And then actually, the government has imposed this two percent extra surplus so the government the, the the budget has been two percent bigger for year of the year to pay our debts and, and and now we actually should use that money so i think we could increase our national debt to like 40 percent and we still have a good economy and, and we could keep the business alive because there is a future also and uh, after this crisis and and then if the business is going down now there is the cry the, the, there will be a financial crisis afterwards. Yeah, indeed. And Anders, you've mentioned that there are a certain estimations that the all in all, the economy in Sweden may fall by 3% or something like that during 2020. What's your, what, what do you think? Do you think at least there could be a rapid recovery once this more or less, um, uh, finishes and you know we, we go back to normal life like a v-shape uh, uh, fall of the economy or this could be more uh, you know this could be deeper and mm. recovery won't happen as fast as, as we would, may wish of course everyone hopes for a for a fast recovery but there could also be i think for for sweden we have a very high dependence on on export being industries, so we are dependent not only on our own market, uh, and uh, so we of course hope that that the rest of the world goes back to normal business as as fast as possible, as soon as possible. But I think also I think we will stay on having problems because the, there has been actually since the financial crisis we have, have seen that a lot of money that has put on the market actually is not really it's like yeah it's like sort of hot air and in the economy and i think i think this crisis will put a light on that problem so i think uh, i'm sad to say that i'm i'm a bit worried about it, not only the, the 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 effect of the of this virus crisis now but it will also perhaps uh, start something else that's that's i'm a bit worried but of course there is also a political perspective on 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 that should we talk about that perhaps 
Gladly, and, and yes, please uh, be my guest. And, and also, I wanted to ask you specifically about what's the current view of the European Union in Sweden and under the light of coronavirus. Mm. I think that the, on, the, on the sort of political perspective, I, I'm also worried about the, in, in this crisis, all people look at the state as the savior of the rescue. Uh, when it's a crisis, everyone thinks about the, the the big state as the savior, and I think that's a that's a problem. It, then actually, it's it's you can see that the the yeah the the public sector is, is very stressed at this situation. But most bis still most businesses work. So we have food on the table. We could look at Netflix at home, and we get home food delivery and so on. So so. Every, the small decisions made on a free market, they work every day, sort of, even if we have a, a very stressed situation. But uh, so it's important to, to, to get people to understand that the free market is, is, is working also in crisis. But, uh, but this, this view as on, on, on the big government as a sort of rescue plan that's that's yeah that could keep on and that that makes them a little bit uh, yeah that's that's a problem for the future indeed and regarding i mean even though the situation in in sweden is is, is better than in other countries definitely do you think also our civil liberties could be eroded when we you know when all of this passes absolutely and uh, we can see that uh, that we get the in acceptance of of state uh, intercept interceptions in, uh, in interventions in in businesses, but also perhaps this accept acceptance of infringement of uh, of person integrity. I think that's that's really worrying. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, and I would like just to come up, and regarding the European Union, what's the sentiment? I mean, do, 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 do Swedish people think that the European Union should do more or, you know, they're fine and I think, and they think that, the, you know, each government should take care of their population? What's, what's the feeling? I think there is very, actually very little discussion on, on European Union in Sweden. Hmm. It's sort of something happening in Brussels. Uh, many Euro Swedish politicians say that's a problem that's coming from Brussels or they use that sort of a scapegoat but we're not really active on, on, a, on the European scene on, and uh, um, I think in, in, in the discussion on, on issues like uh, Corona bonds or Euro bonds and so on we will probably be on the same side as Germany uh, in, uh, Definitely, and I, I'm also thinking about what happened after the financial crisis. Was these ideas? I think the first governments were uh, pointing at each other. That's their, your fault, or yeah, they were uh, sort of fighting against each other. But then they found out it was easier to 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 point on a, as a, on uh, tax havens or multinational corporations as people not as organizations or actors not paying their, their fair share and we have this has been the tax agenda since since the financial crisis that the digital tax and, uh, and this kind of tax debate and i was prob probably will have more of that now that that there will be problem to it's it's easier to say it's in a discussion between Rome and Berlin, it's easier to say that the American company not paying enough than saying that Germany should pay more to, to Rome. So I, I'm, I'm, I think we will have more of that discussion in, in Europe. And it's easy to, to, for politicians in Brussels to, 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 yeah, to make even worse regulations for international corporations than, than share, help each other. I'm myself a bit, I think it's really sad to see how, how bad we have been helping it. Italy, for instance, on, on, uh, on uh, yeah, really, we had, we had big fires in the in forest fires in Sweden two years ago, and we got a lot of help from Italy with, with airplanes for, for 
fighting those fires. And I, I, I'm sad that we don't, doesn't do more to help Italy in this situation. But perhaps not financially, but, but, but yeah, human aid and, and rescue. Yeah, yeah. And just to, to, to wrap up, but I mean, I, I want to ask you a few, a few final questions. Mm -hmm. There has been, a, you mentioned that there has been certain things written about the Sweden situation and, mm -hmm. and we commented via, via email the, the article by one of, um, co-written co, co by one of the Free Market Roadshow, mm -hmm. a very, you know, a very usual speaker, John Fund on, on yeah. National Review recently. And one of the things, and I wanted your, your reflection about that, one of the things that really stuck me from that article that it's great, and I'll, I'll include on the, on the notes on, mm -hmm. on YouTube so people can go and, and, and read it, is that what Sweden is currently doing is basically what used to be the norm. The experiment is the rest of the world. Exactly. I mean, locking up healthy young people is it? It's, it, it has never been the case. Hmm. And in 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 how how things have changed so fast and so dramatically that now Sweden seems to be doing something that it's uncommon. As I said at the beginning of of our our interview on purpose but it used to be the case not that long ago. Mm. I t certainly agree. That's, that's, this is the normal way to, to handle a, this kind of crisis. And I, I think we should, uh, looking back, I think we should have, could have done more to save elderly people and, and, and so on. But the rest of the agenda, I, I mostly agree on it. And I think this, this is how we, the countries normally handle this kind of situation and lock down everything, that's the balance. I think eventually it's a balance between saving lives today and saving lives tomorrow. And, and, and on the typical public choice, if you look at how politicians react, that for them, lives today is worth so much more than, than lives tomorrow. But there is a balance on that. And if we can't save the economy, more lives will will be at stake tomorrow. And and uh, but that, that that's the, the typical problem in a, in a in politics and people doing advocacy and, and talking about market economy and so on. We have to to, to raise our voices in that area also. I think uh, to, to to have some sort of balanced approach. It's it's both a health situation, but it's also a situation on on having economy that can can handle this kind of crisis. But with no money, we can't save lives. At a, there will be no hospitals. Indeed, and 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 just to wrap up with, let's say, let's try to do it in a, in an optimistic way. Yeah. Do you th what are what do you think are the well you mentioned a little bit, but what do you think are the lessons, and particularly what what do you think are the good things that will come up from from this corona crisis? Am I, and I'm thinking maybe there could be some real real changes regarding schools. You know, mm. people are got more you know into what's home what is homeschooling of mm. you know having school online and not necessarily going to buildings and keep all the children all together for long hours in buildings that sometimes look a little bit like jails and, yeah. and many so what are the what are the you know the thing the the, the, the lessons the positive lessons that may come up after after this hmm. yeah of course it's uh, uh, looking at the situation today we have like almost 700 deaths deaths in sweden due to this virus yet so it's of course it's uh, but you i agree we also have to look on the on uh, their probably will learn something. First of all, I think we will uh, we will be more careful on, on uh, balancing different kinds of risk. Uh, you probably read those articles or uh, follows of John Lomborg, the Danish economist. He always do this kind of, uh, what kind of risk do you are most afraid of if you, if you should uh, put up a one to 10 list of different uh, risks. And I think this uh, pandemic situation is always a risk factor, but, but this has been taken not serious enough. And I, now we know that this is probably one of the absolute worst 
risks that the society have. And I think we will be much better to, to tackle this and have safeguards and, and warning systems and so on. And, and we have to learn also that open societies are, are better to, to inform about this. And we will probably put pressure on countries like China to, they, they can't, can't do, yeah, they have to be more transparent uh, on about this. So I think the, the balance, the, 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 how we see on risk for different kind of threats would probably, and some other threats that perhaps not this, are this kind of uh, dangerous would probably have could go down on this list of, of threats. That's, I think that's the, perhaps the most important lesson. But then of course, practical issues that you mentioned with these kind of meetings, I've been doing online meetings for like two weeks and uh, I usually travel all around the world for every weekend. Uh, I think a lot of people will be more used to doing this kind of use with the technology. And I think that's a good thing because we can have a lot of more context. If we both travel and use this kind of technology, this open up the world even more. That's, that's a really good thing. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anders. And, and for our viewers, please yeah. don't forget to visit fmrs.online so you can see what are the webinars and live streams that we are doing. We have had Anders a couple of occasions already, and I'm sure we'll, we'll have him again. Thank you very much, and see Thank you, you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Federico.